asked y'all like, how did you get into his phone, girl? I had already put my fingerprint in the phone months ago. Months ago. <laughs> when we were living together, you just didn't know. <laughs> I feel like every time I want to record um, the guy above me, anytime I want to do anything, the guy who lives above me is like Bigfoot. Like, like, why are you, like, you have to be 600 pounds. But if you were 600 pounds, you wouldn't be able to move around. So what are you doing? Okay, guys. So I'm just getting prepared to tell this story because this is a semi-juicy story. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the juiciest, this story is probably a 6. I have some... 10 juicy stories that I want to share but I want to share this one first um because it's worth sharing I feel like enough time has passed um that I could share this story and hopefully no one gets offended because I know some people will figure out who this person is because I have people who follow me who are mutual acquaintances of you know whatever who went to school with me but it's no big deal I laugh at the situation. I thank God for the situation. Looking back on it now, everything happens for a reason. So, ooh, y'all know that's my favorite cocktail. Um, lemon water and ice. Okay, so without further ado, let me go ahead and jump into this story. So this story is about when I was like in my 20s so some years ago I was with this guy we were pretty serious um, we lived together we were probably together for about uh, two years or so so <laughs> one faithful day um, I decide I got to give you some background so you can really understand like the gravity of the story you got to get some context so you can really understand like the whole story so um, we moved pretty fast as far as moving in together. So there were already red flags like in the first month or so of us living together, but I was like kind of young and dumb and um, I kind of ignored the um, red flags like so many of us do. So we were a very serious couple though because this guy had proposed to me and this was like the first time anyone ever proposed to me even though the proposal was shady like i was getting offered a job to google but i would have to move to ann arbor michigan and he did not want me to go and he ended up proposing to me to basically manipulate me into staying in Georgia and I was stupid enough to do that neck I've already given myself many necks for this whole thing it is what it is it's, it was a growing moment it's a story it's in the past I was young I was dumb if you need to feel better and get it off your chest and put it in the comments that I was dumb do it whatever I don't care I'm not affected by it I've been delivered so anyway so yeah so we were engaged everybody knew it and um the relationship was rocky though because there were just some things that um he struggled with that um made me in turn struggle with me feeling like or under thinking that he was the guy for me the beautiful thing about this relationship though is that it really 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 pushed me um, closer to God his mom was such an amazing woman and when I look back now I really understand why she was the type of woman she was in her place in my life she actually bought me like my first very own Bible in my 20s so um, there's no mistake that this relationship was one that needed to be had so nevertheless um, we ended up um, getting into a big argument and um pretty much i was like i'm done i moved out i was living with him and his parents per his choice that's another story we won't get into and um you know i was like i'm done and i went and i got my own place so um during that time i was kind of like on my 
I'm just going to do me. Like, if you want me back, you need to, like, chase. You need to show me that you want me back type thing. So, he was doing that. You know, he took me out on my birthday. And um, he was, he, I, he bought me something, like, nice on my birthday. I can't remember exactly what it is. Again, like, gifts or material doesn't mean anything. What means everything is a man's actions. But we were going to, we started going to church together. You know, so I'm thinking, okay, we're working things out. So, he had an event one night. I'm not going to say what type of event because that will really give it away on who this person is. And for whatever reason, I decided not to go to the event. I think he was kicking it like, oh, it's just going to be me and my boy. So, I was like, I mean, go out with your boys. Like, you know, I'm not tripping. Like, have a good time as long as you come in over tonight. So he was like, yeah, 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 I'm gonna come over, <laughs> you know? So I'm like, okay, cool. So he goes out and I go out with my friends and you know, it was a eventful night. I'm over here looking for, okay, you know, my fiance is, we're gonna go out, you know? I mean, we'll not go out, he's gonna come over. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I get a bit tipsy. This was before, don't judge me. Um, I get really drunk. <laughs> And I could not drive home. So I believe I took like an Uber or something or maybe one of my friends from the party dropped me off at my house. So I'm calling him like, yo, where he, where is he? And my friend is like, he's not answering. I'm like, yo, um, text him from your phone and act like something's wrong with me. So she does that and he like responds. He's like, is she good? Like I'm too, I think he made like this excuse to said like he was too drunk to come out or something like that. So, um, we didn't sweat it. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah, so he didn't come. So the next morning, um, he, I had to go get my car. So he's like blowing my phone up and, um, I answer the phone and he's like, yo, where are you? Why aren't you at home? I'm here. And I'm like, I had to go get my car. He's like, did you stay over at someone's house? Like giving me the third degree. And I, it kind of took me off guard because I'm like, when, when don't try to flip this, like you didn't come over like you were supposed to. So you suspect right now. So I'm like, okay, whatever. He tried to make this into a big argument. Like this is when you know when a guy is trying to hide something. Like you're trying to make it on me, but you're really the problem, you know? So I get over there and he's acting all funny and I'm like, something's wrong, you know? But he seems like he's still kind of hung over from the previous night. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So he goes upstairs and he falls asleep on my bed. So I go and get my nails done. I'm not thinking anything of it. This is pregnancy because I'm just going to eat. Do I what? Did I unplug something? Yeah. Uh, yeah, baby. I'm in the middle of my video. <laughs> Can you text me? <laughs> Anyway, so <laughs> if you're looking for that piece of the charger, it's in the bathroom. Don't walk through my video. Walk that way. So, anyway, where was I? Cut. I come back and I'm tired because I had been out late too and then I'm going to go get my nails done. So, I'm a little still tired. So, I go upstairs and he's still asleep. And I'm like, dang, like he really must be tired. So something tells me, ooh, check his phone. But then another voice tells me, if you check this phone, you're not going to be able to take a nap. And I don't play about my naps. So I was like, I'm going to check the phone after I take my nap. So I take my nap and I wake up. He's still asleep. So I'm like, dang, like clearly the universe, the world, this is what I say, the Holy Spirit wanted me to check that phone so i get the phone y'all i bet y'all like how did you get into his phone girl i had already put my fingerprint in the phone months ago months ago <laughs> when we were living together he just didn't know <laughs> call me crazy whatever so i unlocked the phone and boom he tried to delete some stuff 
but the residue was still there. The number wasn't saved in his phone, but I had already peeped homegirl's number when me and him lived together, and I knew it was homegirl's number because I put homegirl's number in my phone, eh, 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 and it was homegirl. So I called homegirl. I'm like, um, <clears throat> hey, this is Tiffany. Like, you know what? I'm not even trying to come at you in a disrespectful way, but I just want to know, like, why were you and my dude on the phone? Like, why were you calling him? Like, you know, what's going on? Is there anything that I need to know? You know that we're engaged or we're working on our, you know, engagement, our relationship, whatever. This how you know that a girl is super shady like that a woman isn't really a woman because if someone came to me that respectful i would just tell you everything i'm well, what am i trying to defend this guy for you know what i'm saying she goes you need to talk to him about that uh see now you on my hit list because I gave you an opportunity to be a woman and, and, and you know, come at me and, and let me know, listen, I appreciate you coming. You didn't come at me disrespectful. So I'm gonna let you know I was ah, 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 but you didn't do that. You're on my hit list. So I'm just like, bad. So as I'm on the phone with her, like, I start kind of snapping on her and he comes downstairs like, what are you doing? And I'm just like, why are you talking to this girl? Blah, blah, blah. So I start wilding out. So he started wilding out. He started tearing up stuff in my house. I'm like, get out. Cause this is like my house. My little dog is like, so I'm like, get out. Like, you know, so mad. It was such a heated argument. So he leaves and I'm just like calling my best friend. I'm like, girl, you know, this is what's going on. I phone like, now mind you, this guy was always calling my best friend, crying over me, saying he loved me so much. He just messed up. He don't know what to do. I'll never forgive him. This is why, like, he just want to, like, he don't want to give up, but it just seemed like I'm going to always be on his bad side. He all, I'm always mad at him, blah, blah, blah. So like at this point my best friend is like just forget it like because he's just he's playing you so oh hold on let me readjust <sighs> okay Ooh. what anyway <laughs> shut up so anyway so then you guys um, I was, I was, I was stupid, like for real, I was stupid. So I end up like texting him, like he texts, he, we were texting, exchanging text messages. We go, we just text and text and all day or whatever. So now night has fallen. It's Sunday, works on Monday. So, um, I fell asleep cause he like wasn't texting me back fast enough. This is where he messed up. This is where it gets good. This is where the Holy Spirit was like, listen listen linda right so he texts me like at one o'clock in the morning big mistake i woke up and he's like still on this like i love you like you just gotta chill you gotta trust me like type of thing or whatever and i'm just like okay like how am i supposed to trust you like when this is happening it's nothing like she just popped up she just popped up at my party at this event and you know she just came like it was everybody from the job so it wasn't like it was just her and all this kind of stuff so i'm just like okay and i'm just oh, I'm like my miss pack miss pack lady you know all this stuff like well maybe he just nah. So, so, um, I text him back, like, you know, all in this forgiving spirit and he texts me back. So I'm like, so I get up out of my bed. Y'all I'll never forget. And I was like, Lord, if you just reveal it to me tonight, I pray specifically that this man is cheating on me that i need to leave him just reveal it to me so i can just cut this off cut this stronghold off and move on with my life like lord in jesus name amen okay my husband interrupted me yet again so my bad where was i oh so i prayed specifically 
So I get into my car at 1.30 in the morning, what I call on a school night because I have work the next day. And I'm like, you know, I'm about to drive y'all. Like where I lived compared to where I had to go was like a 35 minute journey because he lived really far. I lived in the city, he lived like out in the burbs. So I drive and I'm still just praying y'all, like just praying. So by the time I get to the exit, like I was like, you can make a left and go down this road like long way, like maybe like eight miles to get to his house or you could just bust this right where all these stores and hotels and stuff are and you'll be there. When I got to the, to the light on that exit, I was about to make a left. I promise you, instinct, the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it, the unit, I call it the Holy Spirit, told me, turn right. I turned right. Then it's like, now I'm in all these hotels, and it's like four different hotels, and I'm thinking, this is stupid. Like, I ain't going, like, even if he is, how am I ever going to, boom! I see his car. I'm like, the first hotel four hotels the first hotel i see his car and i know it's his car because i know it's his tag i know it's his car i'm like oh my god i am so mad i'm over here thinking ways to get into the hotel ways to figure out what room he's in ways to fight him fight her like all these types of things and then once again Oh, because God is so good. He is such a good daddy. He let me see the police over there. <laughs> the guy, there was clearly a police car just sitting there. And it was like that police officer was like, he looked at me and I looked at him and it was kind of like, whatever you about to do, don't do it because you will go to jail. So I was like, you know what? Y'all, it was a wrap. Like, I had prayed about it, I needed to know, that was the end, God told me so, like, in Jesus' name, amen. You would think that was just it. I never talked to him again, I went ghost on him. No. That's why you don't be making promises to God that you're not ready to keep. But he's still good, and he showed me. So, you have free will, do what you want with it, Tiffany. So, the next day I get to work, God bless my manager. Shout out to my manager at that time because he was so understanding of what I was going through and he was a Christian man and he used to like pray me through things, would like talk to me biblically and would tell me about his stories, about you know his past before he was saved. And like, it's kind of like he understood where I was in life and that I had to get through this. Like I had to, see this I had to feel this in order for me to be a better person in the end in order for me to not make mistakes like this anymore and to like really be strong so I said all that because the next day nobody was working on my team because I'm like y'all like I'm telling everybody what's going on and my best friend worked with me on the same team as me and um I called the hotel Wait, let me readjust my seat. Whew. Y'all, I need to calm down because if I go into labor over this, <laughs> if I go into labor, okay. So, um, I call the hotel and I'm like, because I, when I came to him, I wanted all the receipts. I wanted all the evidence. I didn't want him to be able to wiggle his way out of this. Don't be like, oh, me and my frat bros were meeting up and we was doing this and doing that or whatever. Don't lie. Okay. So I called the hotel and I was like, um, I just need to get a receipt um, for when me and my um, boyfriend were there last night. And I give the hotel lady his name. She's like, no, it's not under that name. So then my friend, my friend was like, ooh, ooh, that means she paid for the hotel. She's stupid. She's stupid. And I'm just like, so I asked, I'm like, oh, what is it up under my name? And she was like, yeah, I'll go ahead and send that right over to you. <sighs> she 
she sent it over to me this girl paid for the hotel i don't know whatever y'all he was busted red handed he had no idea that i knew like i was just like how am i going to deliver this information like i was notorious for breaking up with guys in creative ways like especially in high school like i remember one time like i was dating this real like cute guy like everybody wanted him but i was like the he was like the new guy and like we were probably like a, in ninth grade or whatever <laughs> and i had heard that he was messing around with this other girl i'm like you're not gonna the rule is you gotta break up with them before they break up with you right so <laughs> i remember he was in the lunch line i was very creative i'm a pisces and um I came up to him with me and my girls, like some of my girls, and I was like, I handed him a Band-Aid. He was like, what's this for? I was like, you cut. Eh, ooh, what? You know what I'm saying? Okay, so it was like, I, want, I wanted to be creative. But at the same time, it wasn't like a high school relationship because, you know, I'm like an adult and I'm feeling like, and I wasn't having sex in high school. Like, honestly, you know, so it was like, it didn't matter to me. But this was like, personal you know so when i uh, when i confronted him he lied i'm like are you kidding me like it just the lies y'all the lies just went on and on like for a few months to the point and i was just so stupid if like older me could have come down and talked to like younger me i would have been like never spoken to him after that but like i let him like lie so much because i was like really unsure and like i just really tell this story because there are women out there who have been proposed to by a jerk like just because a guy proposes to you does not mean you have to say yes that does not mean that that man was sent from god like men will trust some men and I don't even want to call them men. Some boys will try to use marriage, like I said in the beginning, what he did to manipulate women, okay? Because just marriage isn't the same to everyone, you know? Like the, how deep it is to you isn't that deep to him sometimes. So be aware of that. Because he proposed to me, I was thinking, oh my gosh, like we got to work it out. Nah. I am so grateful that all of this happened because this relationship really pushed me closer to God, to know God. Um, it, it, this relationship pushed me into a, um, a real relationship with God and also revealed to me like some of my closest friends um, who spoke the word over me and who really allowed me to see that's not love. It doesn't matter what he says, what he's done, what the ring looks like. I ended up giving the ring back, you know, ah, ah, ah. it took some time, but I got out of the situation. And one big thing that got me out of the situation is certainly um, prayer. And one thing that I always remember is the Maya Angelou quote that says, one thing love is not is unsure. I was heavily confused. I was always unsure. I was always needing someone else's input to know what I should do. My mom didn't like him. My dad didn't like him. My sister despised him. It was just bad, you know? So in a lot of situations, you just gotta know when enough's enough. So that is my story for today. And like I said, that was like, you know, it was a little juicy, but moral of the story have a relationship with god first pray about everything and don't ignore the red flags i personally don't see how people can have relationships go into marriages without the word of god without a relationship with god because it is so much trickery out here that will kept like will really you know catch you up really tangle you up and especially as women when we just want to 
give to to be loved and to you know submit naturally we honestly do um but you can that can happen with the wrong guy and god forbid you marry someone who is not intended for you think about that struggle so yeah i know that got serious but you know <laughs> I'm just saying it's a lesson so yeah if you like this um, story time with Tiffany give this video a thumbs up make sure you're subscribed to my channel and follow me on Instagram at Tiffany Banks with two S's and I'll see you in my next one boo